Uh, and, I, and then when I was 15, I went to my pastor and we were really good friends. And I said, I just got some questions I need answers to. Because, you know, I'm taking this stuff really seriously. Yes. And I said, he was from Harvard, he was, he had his uh, divinity degree from Harvard, Harvard wow. Divinity. Yeah. That, that was the big God is dead movement thing. Yeah. That was the time I could, anyways, I said, so um, do we believe angels really? Said, no, no, we don't believe that stuff. That's, that's, all, that's wow. all just stories. And I said, wow. And, and so I asked him all these questions about the supernatural things, yeah. you know? And he just, oh, no, 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 we don't believe that. And basically what he was trying to tell me, we believe that you should be good. Yeah. You know, I mean, he wasn't too sure about heaven or hell or anything. Yeah. And I didn't question anything he said because he was the authority. He's my minister, he's the authority. I mean, like, what do we really believe? Wow. And I came away from that. Well, it's, it's all a big lie. It's all, it's... How storm? I begin. I'm beginning to think the same thing after questioning you and the answers you did and refused to give to me. And more importantly, with the indifference and feeling you are, you you displayed to me the utter indifference. And not only that, but a callousness. As if you were, as if I was imposing upon you in your time to ask you these questions. But you know what happened, Storm? I curse with God. I curse with Jesus. Now, if you met the true Jesus Christ, is Jesus going to throw this back up in your face for your putrid failure to love me? Because you were busy, too, too busy loving the rest of the world. Fuck you. And if you truly a loving Christian, you still pray for me. For my soul, for my salvation. But if you're not, fucking typical. The church pastors are hypocrites. Nobody really follows the teachings of Jesus. Just Paul. Christians today are Paulians, not Christians. And fuck you too. And don't you dare use this excuse. Oh, I use tough love for you, Chris. I'll call the cops. Well, fuck you too, bitch. That's just the cop out. When the loving gets tough, she's for you to dump me onto someone else because trying to love me is too tough for you to do because you do really don't have the love of Jesus. Or maybe Jesus just doesn't love everybody. Maybe the Calvinists are right. Jesus is not. Jesus and God do not love everybody. Just the elect. I curse you for not trying your best to answer my questions. One time you even said, I'm not qualified to answer you all your questions. You need to find uh, what, a mentor, a pastor to talk, a counselor. Duh. You got an inside to track Jesus. You got to ask Jesus every question you could possibly think of. Ain't no counselor gonna be able to answer the questions you answered. You are you got an inside track to Jesus. You just don't want to work hard because you want to enjoy the sweet life in your rich home with your boat to go fishing. Some old man gone fishing, and the first time I the first time I tried to email you, I emailed you three, I emailed you three fucking times in two thousand two. You only responded to my third email when I cursed and swore, and then you said this is not the way to get someone to reply to you. But ironically, that was the way I had to. Email you to get a fucking response from you. Because when I emailed you kindly, you never fu fucking responded because you're indifferent towards me. And just remember, you say Jesus hates indifference. Well, <laughs> I curse you. I, I, I don't want to curse God. 
But I'm asking now him all these questions. Where's my freaking answer? I'm going to the source. I'm still further. I'm still fucking thirsty. It's all a big hoax, right? It's all a big lie. A big lie. Is your near death experience a big lie? So big a lie that you it's got you believing it. Is Jesus real? Or is he the greatest hoax and the most cruel hoax ever perpetrated ever possible to perpetrate upon the human race? With the threat of eternal damnation, fire and brimstone and hatred of God from the Calvinists. It's all it's all a big hoax, right? It's all a big Amen. <coughs> Amen, you said it. Your near death experience must be a hoax. As it didn't change the way you, you loved or lack thereof towards me. <coughs> Just like Dr. George G. Ritchie and his near death experience. Some one of your bosom buzzed, buddies. He was unlo he was most unloving to me when I telephoned him in the year two thousand two. He even kept changing the telephone number so I couldn't but I, so I couldn't get up with him, but I kept finding out his new number. It's a bunch of shit. Y'all a bunch of hypocrites. He's definitely yeah, been wow. So, um, I walked away from the church. I never went back. Never. I can't walk away from Jesus. Two reasons. I believe in Jesus. I met him. And I'm afraid to. Although I'm riddled with doubts. I know there was no Moses in Adam and Eve. But I just can't stop believing in Jesus. Every day I have to fight back doubts. Make keep making myself believe in he was born of the virgin. He never sinned a day of his life. He did rise from the dead. When you hurt people, you have no idea how much it may hurt them and hurt them like for the rest of their life, traumatize them. Wow. You catch that? You're right. It could change a person's life. Like that pastor did to me. The, the pastor. How storm? Like you did to me. In 2002? Ever since then, 2006, 2007, when I emailed you, try, I even called you on the telephone. And you hurt me just like that pastor hurt you. And talking to you on the telephone, you were so like a morgue stone. Let me tell you how you were like. And you, Dr. George G. Richard was the same way with, you, with me when I called him on the telephone. I once called a Unitarian pastor up. But you know they don't believe that Jesus is God. So they're wrong. They're evil. They're of the devil. And when I talked to that Unitarian pastor, he was curt. He's like, I asked him for some questions. He's like, does your, does your religion produce fruit? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, because Jesus said, by their fruits you yes, shall know them. Goodbye. So, just like a morgue slab. Him, you, Dr. George C. Ritchie. And when I sent you a sorry I wrote, it had World War Three in it. I know you didn't read the fucking thing because had you done so, you would have told me what you wrote in your book. My descent into death. That Jesus told you there would be no World War Three. She didn't waste your time. You're too busy loving your church. One time I called you on the telephone. And you're like, I can't talk to you. I got a wedding to go to tonight. Were you lying? Who has weddings at night? Every wedding I've heard of happened in the daytime. So Harold Storm, because of the way you treated me, in part, I'm cursing God. Now I want to curse God. Pardon me doesn't, but until I get some fucking answers. And look, if you're truly loving, if your Jesus is truly real, you will offer to take me out to dinner and just talk and listen and love me. Unconditionally. But if you can, it cannot do this, you met the counterfeit Christ, you are not saved, and when you die, you're going to go to hell and bust hell wide open. And that's just the name of that tune. What you got to say about that? Probably not a goddamn thing. You're going to use that tough love excuse on me. That lame-ass excuse when the loving gets tough. 
And you don't want to have to bother with loving because it's too hard to do it. Because nobody, no Christians don't want to work hard today. They just want to take the easy street, do a little work for God, then go home, go to the restaurant, eat chicken dinners, eat fried chicken, get a belly bigger than a spare tire. Have you ever noticed how all these preachers are so, got massive bellies, are so fat? <laughs> Every goddamn preacher I know is fat as a tub of lard. <laughs> Loves to pig out and commit gluttony. It's time to rock and roll tonight. Yeah. Love me, but instead you stood up, you spit me out, you kicked me down. I hate your never love me. 